Yeah. I've always felt with Frank that that uh, I grew as an artist on each film. Production on Patton ended in late May 1969, after 13 weeks of shooting, exactly on schedule. Schaffner returned to Hollywood in June and began to work closely with his friend and colleague, composer Jerry Goldsmith. At the time of Patton, I was under contract to 20th Century Fox, and after having done Planet of the Apes, I was naturally assigned to do the sequel of Planet of the Apes. Unfortunately, the sequel was being done exactly the same time as Patton. And uh, Frank came back from Europe after shooting Patton and said, you got to do Patton. I said, I am. I said, when's it go? And he told me, so I'm doing pa Planet of the Apes, the second one. I said, you're what? So said, well, I'm doing the sequel. He said, no, you're not. you got to do Patton. I said, it's not up to me. So this sort of torture went on for, for a couple of months until finally Dick Zanuck, who was running the studio, was head of the studio then, stepped in and said that I was going to do Patton. And thank God, I mean, if, you know, if I look back in history and think that I didn't do Patton because I was doing a sequel to Planet of the Apes, I don't know what I would do. I've found over the years that when, when a director says to me that I play a musical instrument, that I'm, you know, I'm musical, I said, that's trouble. Frank didn't play a musical instrument, but he loved music, and he understood what music should do in a film and what it should be in a film. And uh, we had, as a matter of fact, we had a very running, funny running gag. When I did the original main title on Planet of the Apes, I had a piccolo doing his little figure, which made it a little bit too playful. And Frank said, you know, it's a little too playful. Maybe you should put it on the flutes. And I said, good idea, you're right. And from that point on, he would always uh, chide me by saying, I hate piccolos, I hate piccolos. So I remember he looked at the music once on, uh, on Patton, on some of the sketches I was writing on Patton, he said, what's this piccolo? I said, that's a piccolo trumpet. I don't want any piccolos. Piccolo trumpet being this very small B-flat trumpet. Stylistically, it, it, it's me, the music, in, in, in Patton. I wanted to treat Patton as a three-tiered personality, as a character, because he was a complex person and multi-layered, and I wanted to, naturally the warrior, which would be treated with the march, and then the religious aspect of him, which was with a chorale, and then the fanfare, which was his reflection, is, 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 which was supposed to be the archaic, his belief in reincarnation. And I wanted those three themes to work in concert with each other, as counterpoint to one another, that they would stand on them by themselves, Two could play, three could play, they could all work together. I didn't consciously set about doing anything for the arcade. I knew I had to do it, and I was, all of a sudden one day I just wrote this down. I said, oh, that works great for that, the past. So what I did is I wanted it to be repeated and get softer and softer and softer. So we had a very primitive echo device then, electronic device. So all the trumpet player would play is da dum and then it would repeat over and over again. It was just tape delay echo where it wasn't da 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 decayed away. And for some reason, this became so catchy to everybody. I mean, it's, it's amazing that little, simple little device became... All of a sudden, everybody got very excited about that. And it was, that's the way to do it, it was electronic. Well, I do this, you know, I do it in, in concert all the time. I do Pat and I end up, my programs all the time with Pat and and with that fanfare, which they play live. They play just as easily, it sounds just the same. It's interesting, in a film that's almost three hours long, there's only 32 minutes, roughly 32 minutes of, of score in the picture, uh, as opposed to, if that picture is made today, there'd probably be an, an hour and 30 minutes of music at least in the picture. I originally wrote music for them coming along the highway and then going to the hospital up to the point where he slaps the soldier. And Frank never wanted music there. And I said, I argued with Frank about it. I said, I think we should have music there because if I can sort of create sympathy for Patton, perhaps when he reacts so violently, it'll shock the audience more. So I said, all right, give it a try. Well, I did it and it did create sympathy for, for Patton, so much sympathy for Patton that you, thought he was justified in his act. 
we both agreed I, it didn't work. It was the wrong thing. But Frank was reluctant to just dispose of the music because he knew that I worked very hard on it. And again, he respected the fact that I had put so much effort into it. So he tried moving it a little to a different place, trying to play it for part of the scene. I said, Frank, you've wasted two hours trying to do this in the dubbing. Forget it. It doesn't work. It'll be in the album, but you know it won't be in the picture. I understand. I mean, that was the kind of person. The more I talk about, the more I miss him. And I think this is like any good piece of art. Any good, the audience will read into it what they want to read into it. I think that the, the more pacifistic people saw what they wanted to, and the more hawkish people saw what they wanted to. I remember I got a, a letter from, uh, I guess it was Mrs. Patton, who said that her grandson, who was now in, <laughs> who was in West Point, or VMI, I don't know which one, of the, would serenade his girls with the soundtrack to Patton. I said, oh, that's interesting. And uh, it was, you know, I've seen various people react in various <laughs> different ways to that music and to the into the film. And that, the music has been actually was used in two very interesting places. It was the when they in Desert Storm when they when they went in, the troops went in, they used Patton, the, the music, the march from Patton. And also when uh, the Marines were trying to get Noriega out uh, of hiding, they stopped bombarding him with with rock and roll and they played Patton and he came out. Patton was an immediate hit upon its release in 1970, earning a remarkable $28 million in the United States and Canada alone. Over the years, the film has lost none of its power or controversy. It remains today a film milestone, a tribute to a legendary general, a superb script, a brilliant score, and the flawless direction of a gentleman director Franklin Schaffner.